Good morning and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Thijs Broeke. I'm a councillor in the City of London and I'm also chair of the Cultural Mile Business Partnership, which we are launching this morning. We're delighted you could join us and I'm really pleased to see a widespread of businesses have registered for our event today. Indeed, this mix of organisations gives a real flavour of the varied ecosystem that makes Cultural Mile so special. We are here this morning to share with you our plans to develop a business improvement district or BID in this area of the square mile. A selection of local leaders will share with you why they are excited about this opportunity and the benefits it can bring to the area and all of its businesses. There will be a chance of Q&A at the end, so please do post your questions using the link in the video description below and we will do our best to answer as many as possible. But first, on this early, on this winter morning, we would like to take an opportunity to gently wake us all up and start to think about the new possibilities and a unique place that is the Culture Mile. Here to lead us in a short exercise we call the Creative Boost is, Isha, is Joshua Idian, a poet and musician who has been described as the poet laureate of the UK jazz scene. He is part of critically acclaimed bands such as Benin City and Kalabasht and has previously worked with Kultramal. Over to you, Joshua. Thank you very much. Hope everyone can hear me. Uh, hi, my name is Joshua and I'm just going to jump straight into this uh, creative exercise. This morning I'd like to do a little workshop with you. Um, I used to work with Kultramal and uh, now I've moved over to Sweden and as you do, uh, apart from dealing with the code here, I've learned a lot about the Vikings. And what I've learned is between the um, burning and raiding and pillaging that they used to do, the Vikings actually used to write poetry, albeit very, very short poetry. They developed a style called Kennings, and this is how it worked. One person would come up with a noun, uh, a place, an object, a person, and other people would try and think of two words only two words to describe that particular noun it had to be two words like that uh showed the personal connection what you personally thought about that noun. i'll give you an example for example one person would say ocean and someone else would say whale road or ship grave someone would say sword and another person would say war metal someone would say blood and then somebody else would say battle sweat someone would say battlefield and somebody else would say crow's feast and someone would say party and another person would say work event so you see what i mean it's kind of like try and think of two words to describe one and try and use two words that uh, uh show a personal connection or or how you see those how you see that one word and i thought that that would be a great thing that we could do today um what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a set number of words. And if you can just as quickly as you can, just think of any two words that describe uh, the, the uh, words I mentioned. Um, yeah, I uh, hope that works. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Uh, here are the words that I'm going to uh, give for this exercise. London, Smithfield's Market, coffee, business, Morgate, and Omicron. And the object is to think of two words to describe any of the words I've just mentioned. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in this exercise with you. And just to show that like, you know, uh, there's, you can't always, is the, the object of the game is not to come up with a, the, the smartest or the cleverest uh, examples or words because you know you'll it's to help your mind wake up and it's to help you kind of like see differently i'm going to do this game right now with you and to show how sometimes the words you come up with can sound terrible okay that's enough of me talking let's get into it
All right. Um, I'm just aware that we don't have a lot of time. So yeah, I've, uh, uh, okay, let me give you 30 more seconds. And the words are London, Omicron, Coffee, Smithfields, and Business. 30 more seconds for that. I, I've just been furiously writing a, a couple now. This is a lot harder than, <laughs> it, it's not hard. It's just sometimes it, it takes a while for the brain to, to wake up, at least my brain. Okay, cool. Um, just to wrap this up, uh, I hope that was uh, energetic for you. Here are my examples. I came up with them right now. I didn't write anything prior. For London, I wrote Rent Pit and Cold Summers. For Omicron, I wrote not again and oh no. For coffee, I wrote liquid slap and Popeye spinach. So again, it's that kind of relationship between the, the, the first word and the descriptive words that you come up with to create like a new meaning and help people see uh, nouns differently. Um, yeah, that's it. That's me. I hope uh, that woke everyone up and got you ready for today. And I'm going to hand it back to Tice. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, I had a similar sentiment when you said Omnicrom. I, I said go away and uh, perhaps a bit Viking. Thanks for um, introducing us uh, this morning, waking us up uh, all the way from Sweden, Joshua. Uh, so now we're all awake. I will, and for those who are new to Culture Mile, I would like to introduce you to its work. Culture Mile is the City of London's cultural district stretching from Farringdon to Moorgate. Since launching in 2017, the area has been animated with imaginative collaborations and events and started to deliver major improvements to the public realm. Culture Mile has also worked with organizations from across the city to explore how we can build a hub for creativity, innovation and learning that delivers economic growth and, a social, and social mobility for London. Of course, the Culture Mile area has a rich history, being a central part of life in London, hosting, as it does, a mix of medieval, Victorian and brutalist architecture that frames a remarkable 2,000-year heritage. This includes Roman Londinium, Barge Fair in Smithfield, and the post-war vision of the Barbican Estate as a new way to live in the city with world-class culture at its heart. The area is once again at, on the cusp of transformation. The arrival of the Elizabeth Line will bring an additional 1.5 million people within 45 minutes of travel. Major projects, including the relocation of the Museum of London, the renewal of the Barbican Arts Centre and the 900th anniversary of Barge Hospital are all underway. And there is a unique mix of sectors based here in this area, from legal and financial, creative, retail, hospitality, health and well-being, academic, tech, and many more, already demonstrating their interest in forming part of a bigger idea that will benefit everyone. It's the potential of the Culture Mile that encouraged the City of London Corporation to work with the amazing cluster of cultural organizations that are here the Barmican Centre, the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, the LSO and the Museum of London. Over the last few months, we have been hard at work building connections between the different sectors. And alongside the work of the business partnership, the City of London Corporation has continued its investment into transforming the area's public spaces, as well as the Cultural Mile Learning Programme, which supports young people across London, and the Culture Mile Creative Communities Programme, engaging residents of the city and neighbouring boroughs. All of these elements can be found on the Culture Mile website, culturemile.london. The partnership we are launching today is separate from these existing initiatives, but our partnership is powerfully linked 
and well placed to deliver one of the most remarkable and creative places in London. Forming a business improvement district is an effective way of establishing strong public private partnerships and a logical step for Culture Mile to explore. Our bid has received a very favorable response in early research amongst the local business community. Indeed, the partnership that we are launching today includes 12 of the area's businesses that have already joined our journey. The proposal of our bid comes at a critical time for London. We believe it will support the Square Mile's economic recovery from the pandemic by providing a mechanism for local businesses to work together to shape investment and by drawing on the key area's key strengths using creativity to create a place where people want to work in or visit, bringing back uh, workers to the office, creating a cultural destination and attracting the best global talent to the city. To explain more about the process and the benefits that BITS can bring, I would like to introduce Ruth Dustin. Ruth is Managing Director of Primera. She works at the heart of Central London's BITS community, and uh, which includes uh, the established BITS in the Square Mile. And Ruth is working closely with our partnership as we explore the potential for a BIT in London's Cultural Mile. Ruth, the floor is yours. That's great. Thank you very much, Tice. And uh, very good morning to everybody on this very cold January morning. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here uh, this morning, helping to unveil the plans for this new partnership in the Square Mile, with the view to creating a new business improvement district for the city by the spring of next year. It's a really exciting opportunity for myself and my colleagues of Primera to be involved with Culture Mile, having worked on a number of business improvement districts across the Square Mile already. And bids are very much formalised business partnerships, bringing the local business community together and delivering ambitious regeneration and urban renewal projects. Partnership sits at the heart of all of our work, whether that be running some of London's largest and most well-established bids, through to developing an emerging partnership, such as the Culture Mile, which we're talking about this morning, and creating community interest companies. So a lot around that social, economic, and physical regeneration. And having spent over 30 years working in social and economic regeneration, the golden thread for me is that communities are stronger when different stakeholders pull together and coalesce around shared mutual objectives. And I think as a result of the pandemic, that's really shone a lens on that particular area of activity and really underlined the value of partnership working. And we've got some fantastic examples where the public and private sector have collaborated, providing essential support for businesses across the capital and demonstrating what can be delivered when we work together. And long may that continue as we now embark on our recovery process. The pandemic and particularly the catastrophic lack of footfall from the City of London's perspective due to working from home, which hopefully is, you know, with the lifts yesterday, hopefully we'll start to see people returning to their desks, has had an enormous impact. Add to the mix the loss of international travellers, and I think it's really highlighted the interdependency between us as a business community from across all different sectors, be that the banking sector, the insurance sector, right through to the local dry cleaners, all of the cultural venues, wine bars, hotels, and the clothes shops. The impact has been phenomenal. And over the last two years, much has changed and much is set to change further as a result of the, largest, the lasting legacies of COVID. So I think it's more important than ever that we pull together to collectively shape the city, building a resilient and sustainable city for the future. There are a number of bids already operating across the square mile um, and they've been in situ for, um, well, the Cheapside Business Alliance has been uh, obviously up and running for nearly 10 years now and operating very successfully alongside the Allgate Connect, which is a newer business improvement district that was uh, devised back in 2019. In addition to that, we've got two new emerging business improvement districts, which is the Eastern City Partnership and Fleet Street Quarter. So by the spring of this year, 
the square mile will see four bids operating, four formalised business partnerships, all investing, all working collaboratively together to, to build a very local flavour around the areas that they represent. And behind that, we've got the development of the Culture Mile, which we're working towards developing as a business improvement district by the spring of 2023. Bids across the city have been working collectively and collaboratively together. And I think if we pull the map up now, Jamie, we can just have a look just to give people a sense and flavour um, in terms of the, the coverage that business improvement districts have. For those of you that aren't familiar with bids, as I've said at the beginning, they're formalised business partnerships. They're established within a legislative framework and they represent a very local geographical location and area, bringing together the business community to work collaboratively with businesses balloting on the creation of a business improvement district. So you as businesses will be invited to, to participate next year in the vote for a bid for the Culture Mile. If we're successful with a 51% majority, then businesses will make a voluntary contribution, a levy, into the bid partnership, and that levy is then invested back into that local geographical area. But I think collectively, we must be part of this mission to create a city that encourages people back to their desks, it attracts international and domestic leisure visitors, and continues to pioneer and drive the UK economy. And it's only by being the best we can that we can all achieve this together. Alongside that, the ESG agenda can and should be driven by the bid community. And we need to create and curate the best environment, inspire the best visitor experience, push for a robust transport system, and look to continue to attract and retain the best talent. With leading green credentials and fostering a strong sense of social values. All of these things matter and only can be achieved by us all working together. If we look at the timeline now, in terms of how we take this journey towards the bid ballot, we've got the launch of the partnership today, albeit virtually, and I hope over the coming months, we can all start to meet each other in person um, and build those relationships with the wider business community. In the spring of this year, we'll be reaching out to you all to undertake a survey, a perception analysis, really seeking your views and comments on what you feel are areas of priority that we can address collectively across the geographical area which we've shared with you this morning. The results of that perception analysis will then enable us to put together a five-year business plan, our manifesto, that we will then share with you, which you will then be invited to vote on in January, February 2023. And pending a successful ballot outcome, we will then go live as a business improvement district in April 2023. So the timeline is now set. We have the ballot in sight. And I look forward to working with you all and talking to many of you over the coming months. I'd like to now introduce a colleague of mine who I have had the pleasure of working with across other bid districts from Brookfield. Caitlin Warfield, who is the Vice President of Marketing at Brookfield Properties, to now say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you uh, for having me today. Um, we have several properties within the remit of the Culture Mile, so we're really excited to see this bid um, come to fruition. So as an international business with a major stake in each of the neighborhoods and cities where we hold properties, I'd like to share some of my on why Brookfield Properties has joined the board of the Culture Mile Partnership and why we see working together across the local area as critical to the future of all businesses. We're already very active in other bids across the city, and we recognize that they can be really powerful mechanisms to bring businesses together. They ensure that they lead the evolution of compelling and vibrant places where today's talent wants to be. At Brookfield Properties, we do this proudly and ambitiously around the world through our arts and community engagement programs. We understand that creativity and culture is a great tool that makes urban places special. And we know our city centers need to demonstrate their value and work to attract and retain people now more than ever and need to be really visionary as they build a future. For us, culture is one way to do this. 
culture not as a decorative afterthought, but as something hardwired into the way we explain a place's character, heritage, and how we support its local economy and the successes of all its businesses. Culture that works hand in hand with the commercial agenda. It is the responsibility of the bid to really connect with the world-class offer and heritage in this specific area that makes us excited. By connecting Culture Mile's cultural and commercial strengths, we believe a bid can create one of the most amazing locations in the world that links businesses, success, and creative urban experiences. We know that people in the city are comparatively young and they are excited to locate themselves close to culture, keen to engage with and participate in it, and to spend time and money on cultural experiences rather than things and are happy to explore and move between different art forms, media, digital platforms, and real life events. What this talent wants and how we can attract, retain, and grow it here is by leveraging the cultural and creative strengths that we have already strongly represented. By bringing our diverse sectors and businesses together around a bold, unified, and creative vision, we believe that a culture mile bid provides a really positive and sustainable route beyond the pandemic for this area. One that is completely true to the historical character for this part of the city, and that will create transformational opportunities for everyone. To explain a bit more about the detail of the partnership strategy and focus, I will now pass on to Tim Jones, the culture mile manager. to share with you the four strategic themes that the business partnership has agreed on to frame its activities over the next year and to test with local businesses so we can come up with a strong business plan this autumn. I'll also be explaining how you can get involved. Please uh, ask us uh, questions uh, in the link below the description uh, below the video as we'll be following up this section with a panel discussion which will provide us with a chance to answer some of them. So through a set of conversations with the area's businesses, the partnership has agreed four strategic themes through which we'll be exploring over the coming months how a bid in Culture Mile can strongly address local priorities and opportunities. We'll be testing these with local businesses and be delivering a set of practical projects which begin to make these areas of focus real and which demonstrate the power of collaboration across the area. The first one is called Cultural Destination. The business partnership will promote the area as a major destination for creativity, innovation and learning that capitalises on the world class cultural offer in the district. It will work to attract and retain talent, support businesses and both increase and diversify the area's visitor base. Number two, we call inspiring places. The business partnership will lead a high quality placemaking program to enhance the public realm bring vibrancy to the streets, streetscape and enrich the everyday experience of the area. The partnership will ensure this aspect of its work reflects the area's unique stories, stimulates imaginations, supports productivity and ensures that well-being is a priority within Culture Mile. The third one is called Connected Community. The partnership will begin to create tangible and exciting connections across its diverse business community that we believe in the long term can unlock even greater potential for collaboration and, and innovation across the area. We'll provide opportunities for professional talent to establish new relationships, exchange and learn from each other while championing diversity, inclusion and social mobility. Last and far from least is sustainable environment. The partnership will engage and enable local businesses to take collective action in response to the climate emergency, prioritising planetary health. It will take a proactive approach on air quality, greening, transport and freight strategies and energy use, thereby identifying further bold commitments which will drive forward the transition to net zero. The way you can get involved in the partnerships work from now on is very clear and we hope appealing to you. We are establishing voluntary steering groups for each of these strategic themes and these groups will run over the coming year in the lead up to the ballot. Joining a steering group will allow you to contribute to a place that you might already be passionate about or which you might want to learn more about. The groups will also provide great social opportunities at a time when we all know we need more of this as they begin to practically build the joined up community that can really make Culture Mile successful. Each steering group is voluntary and will meet quarterly, so four or five meetings at most, and will report back into the partnership board. There are a number of remaining spaces on the steering groups and we're particularly seeking businesses based in the footprint that was uh, suggested by the map that Ruth showed earlier to take part. Specialists and members of local communities are also welcome. 
So please let us know if you would like to be considered for a steering group by emailing us at info at Culture Mile London and putting steering group interest in the subject line of your email. And uh, we're now at the Q&A session. If you haven't been doing so already, please ask us any questions using the link in the description as I introduce our panel. First, I'd like to bring Ruth Dustin back in, as given her huge experience, it's a great opportunity to ask Ruth any questions about bids, however basic or sophisticated. Ruth will be very happy to answer these. Alongside Ruth, two other members of the partnership board join us. Sharon Ament, who is the director of the Museum of London and an internationally recognized cultural leader. Sharon is overseeing the relocation and transformation of the museum from its existing site on London Wall to its new position at the West End of Smithfield Market, both places within the district. And Andrew Smith is the managing, managing partner at BDB Pittmans, a leading UK law firm that's recently relocated into the district to Bart Square. Andrew is vice chair of the partnership and brings valuable experience as the former chairman of the Victoria Westminster bid. Sharon, Andrew, you're very welcome. I'd like to ask each of you briefly, in, in one minute if you could, uh, to share with us what excites you about the potential of a bid in Culture Mile and how you think it might benefit your organisations. Sharon, could I invite you to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, well, a museum is a complicated old business in that we are, you know, obviously operate as a business, we're a charity, but mostly we're about people, of course, as a museum. And so I think that this um, partnership has this really fa fabulous opportunity to give us a bit of self-determination in our local neighbourhood with uh, the museum partnering with the kind of ec economic environment and the communities and the people who live here. So I think this is a really exciting development of Culture Mile. And I, I believe, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that this business improvement district could do something really different from other business improvement districts, which is really focus on the power of the, the word culture and bring that together in a community sense. And as Ruth said, you know, post COVID, this is really important. So this bid, as it develops now, is actually at a really interesting time evolving now as we emerge perhaps from a pandemic, the world has changed and this is our opportunity to be part of a new sort of partnership. But it's the self-motivation and the neighbourhood focus, which is really important to me. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, it's the same question to you, Andrew. Uh, what, what gets you excited about the potential of a bid in this area and what do you think it might do for your organisation? Oh, thanks, Sam, and thanks, everyone. Um, I've yeah, I saw when I was chair of the Victoria Westminster bid how the bids can really help with that sense of place and the and building a sense of community in, in the area. And when we moved to the city, we wanted to be make sure that we were involved in, in the city and where we are. It, I think it's very important for people working in the city that they feel a part of it. They spend a lot of time here and it's all too easy to go from the tube back to your desk and back to the tube again without really seeing what's what's around you and feeling part of it. And as Ruth said earlier, it's particularly important post-COVID to attract people back into the city and to give them a reason to come into the into the office. And I think that's how the bid can can really help and it will help those small businesses that Ruth was was talking about as well you know getting larger businesses getting that sense of place that sense of community attracting people back in a, a unique feature here is the the culture mile is the cultural uh, aspects which really helps with that that attraction bringing back and to have that partnership between the cultural and the commercial is is really important and really exciting but i think just finishing on that i think as uh, Sharon has also said, got to be careful not to make them separate, the, the commercial and the cultural. They're all connected, all a partnership, and it's all about working together. Th thanks, Andrew. Um, so just to just to follow up where you where, where you finished off uh, with a, with a question for Ruth. Ruth, you, we've 
in, in we've been talking this morning quite a bit about the power of the of the cultural strength of the area to really inform a, a bid offer and you've um, got huge experience of central London bids which also have been doing their own um, engagement with culture and is working out how bids can use culture as a tool for for benefit um, where do you think the culture mile bid fits in relation to that and how do you think particularly businesses that might not be thinking every day about culture or creativity in the way that say Sharon's organization might how do you see that they're learning to engage with it and derive benefit from it uh, well I think first of all um, you know bids are exactly what London needs right now. There is the tightening of the public purse. Um, so there is the opportunity, I think, as Sharon said, to have that local neighbourhood feel and how businesses can work collaboratively together. I think the unique quality of this particular business improvement district, and let's not forget, a lens was really shone on the whole cultural sector during the pandemic, but the valuable contribution it makes to London. And I think through a business improvement district for the culture mile, it will act as the conduit to bring the business community together to really use that platform to show its creativity and its innovation. But it's also about how we can animate our public spaces, think about how we encourage people to come back to their desks, as Andrew has touched upon, but also help London in terms of its recovery, because it's so much more than just getting people back into the centre. It's what that future economy looks like and how culture can play a very key role in driving that economy forward and ensuring that, that we are the best we can possibly be. Thanks, Ruth. We've got a healthy number of questions beginning to come through now. Uh, we've got five minutes to play with. Um, so uh, I'm just going to pick them. Inevitably, forgive me, Ruth, but quite a lot of them are about people asking about the technical side of bids. Uh, there's a question here about how do bids work with each other in the, in the longer term? They, they work with each other very well, actually. So um, the neighbouring bids, which you saw on the map, which we shared earlier, provides an enormous opportunity for the Culture Mile bid to work in partnership with Cheapside, Allgate, Fleet Street, but also wider as well. So um, through the bids, the, the central London bids, we also come together as, as a collective of business improvement districts. We share best practice. But we also look at where we can partner up and work together and create economies of scale on sort of certain um, activities and areas. And I think the, the, the final part of my answer to that question is bid boundaries are not hard boundaries. They're not like borough boundaries. Um, so they are much softer and there's a, there's a lot more fluid between them. So there is the opportunity to work more collaboratively together. And I think from a culture mile perspective, this just isn't about us looking at the, the local district, but the, the ripple effect and the impact we can have across the whole of the square mile. Thanks, Ruth. Andrew, do you have uh, any examples of that from your previous uh, engagement in Victoria Westminster? Uh, yes, I, I do. I mean, we were, so Victoria Westminster was next door to the, Victoria, the established Victoria bid. Um, so we worked very closely with them and they've actually now combined into the South Westminster partnership as, as well. But particular one, there was an area, I don't know if people know, but there's a place called Christchurch Gardens near uh, St. James's Park Tube, which for years had been very run down. It had rough sleepers. It wasn't a very nice place. And actually by the two bids working together, they were able to work with the city of Westminster as well to regenerate that space. And if you go along there now, it has been completely transformed. Uh, it's a lovely place to, to be. And that was very much driven by the by the bids and work those bids work together, which I'm sure Ruth will acknowledge as well. Great. And, and on this question of the soft borders, Ruth, there's a question uh, from someone saying, if you're already subject to a bid uh, and paying the fees, uh, will we be included as we, I don't know which organisation it is, as we are situated on Charthouse Street on the border? Um, if, if you're outside of the bid boundary, then you will not pay um, to be part of the bid. However, if you'd like to make a voluntary contribution and be part of the bid, then that's a conversation that we can always have, absolutely. But in terms of the bid boundary, it will it will pick up those businesses that sit within the footprint under the legislation. But that's not to say that we can't invite um, 
members from outside. And we do do that in other business improvement districts. So Harley Street uh, Area Partnership in uh, Westminster, we've got a number of businesses that pay voluntarily to be part of that business improvement district, even though they don't sit within that bid boundary because they see the merits and benefits of working collectively and collaboratively. Thanks. And the other, sorry, just, just to say, sorry, Tim, very quickly, um, bid boundaries can also be tweaked and changed when they go back out for a bid renewal. So they have a five-year term. After that five-year term, they can refresh their boundary. Thanks. Um, and I suppose it might be just be worth adding as well that um, uh, up until this point, Culture Mile has, uh, before the bid um, proposal uh, was uh, was uh, imagined, had already been working with quite usefully fuzzy boundaries, which meant that though it's predominantly in the city of London, it's had relationships with great organisations like Fabric and the Charterhouse and so on uh, across the border, <coughs> across the local authority border to its on its north side. Um, because, of course, we're all aware that the public doesn't necessarily clock or pay much attention to when they're, they're crossing local authority boundaries. They want to make sense of the places and the amazing heritage and history in the areas that they are in. We've, Sharon, we've got a great question here from our friends at EC1 Echo. How can we wake up the city and Culture Mile at night? Oh, I've got big plans. But we'll <laughs> do it nice and gently. And, of course, with all of the uh, locals. Um, but, you know... Um, my what will be my part of um uh of uh the bid in smithfield is already an amazing 24 hour place you know the market starts at about midnight goes on until seven ish uh, eight ish bart's is running 24 7 bart's a hospital um and fabric, uh, you know, nightclubs and places like that. So, you know, to, I think um, this is a unique aspect and wonderful part of the character of, of the Smithfield part of uh, the bid. And um, I think we can find new exciting ways to live in the night space. So from our museum perspective, hot off the press is we are thinking now about having a bit of a nighttime museum, a part of the museum that we will only open at night, which will, which will interrogate and look at um, nighttime London. And that will change over the course of years. We want to have a 24-hour cafe, the Coco Rooms. I want people to come to be able to wake up in fear and know that they can... Mm, beat a path to uh, the Museum of London's Coco Rooms, meet people in a cafe, have a chat and have the best cup of cocoa of their lives. You know, I think we can create really special uses and ways of engaging with the city and with each other throughout a 24 hour period. That's just a few of the ideas now, which we are working on. And I think we can, we can have this as a legitimate and really interesting part of the bid conversation and the cultural conversation so and the neighborhood conversation so i think this is um gives us a really exciting and um innovative and meaningful opportunity thanks thanks sharon um how exciting i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stay with you for for a, a second question it's not not directly related but hopefully unlocking another chamber in your brain uh, because we've got a question that's come through saying, what opportunities do you see from a bid for children and young people? And I know that um, young people's experience of London and access to facilities in London has been, is, is, has been key to your thinking for a long time. So it would be great to um, get your take on how you're thinking about that. We, yes, absolutely. You know, I was only at the museum yesterday and, you know, kind of reminding myself of the sounds of it. You know, when you hear you know, 40 kids who are excited to be on a day out coming to the museum uh, is the kind of uh, sounds I would like to hear right across the Cultural Mile Business District. And we can all participate in that in some way. Making a place which is really child friendly and engaging for young people um, is will be a real... Um, challenge but also a real a real um 
a real opportunity yeah. because we're we're about learning. We have we as Tim, as you said, our destination is a learning destination. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, we we do that. Many of the organisations do that either through you know providing learning and educational activities but i think we can become more informal uh, as we go out onto the streets and create a place that people want to be at weekends families want to be and we've proved that this is an evocative space um through events such as smithfield 150 or the play streets or other activities and all around us are some really big dense populations and these are young populations and I think the generosity of the Culture Mile Business District should be about reaching out to those younger populations in the surrounding boroughs to um, open ourselves up and to, and to give opportunity um, and to welcome in all sorts of new ways. I, I imagine there's some, um, from a kind of technical point of view, thinking about um, uh, how to relate that to business benefit as well. There's some important work that we should be doing over the coming year in terms of thinking about um, work experience opportunities for young yeah. people, for apprenticeships, for pathways into work and employability, particularly. I mean, I mean, I've always been conscious over the past few years when I've been involved of, of you know, the city's proximity to Islington and, you know, a, a very... Um, you know it's a, a very different world for some people in in so many respects that that we can should can and should be actively engaging with as part of a uh Ab you know, just, just the social as well as economic yeah. regeneration of the area absolutely and we can do that in a very purposeful targeted way by coming together in a partnership uh ruth you had your hand up yeah, no, it was really just to uh, obviously build on, on what Sharon and yourself have said. And I think from a business perspective, let's also remember businesses uh, bring in a lot of, of graduate schemes. And so there's a lot of the Gen Zs and millennials. So there's an enormous opportunity from a business perspective to engage with uh, the younger members of our workforce, as well as working with our city fringe residents in the local community. And I think it's really pushing at the ESG agenda around that whole social theme. So I think there's an enormous amount of business benefit in there in terms of where we can work collaboratively on that. Thanks, Ruth. Um, I, I I could certainly talk for another hour or two um, uh, with this with this panel, but uh, digital events and attention spans being what they are, we we don't want to outstay our welcome. But we hope uh, we've given you a, a flavour of the intention of the Culture Mile uh, bid uh, idea and emerging proposals, and that you want to uh, learn more about them as we go. Um, uh, a, a final reminder, please, to uh, thank you to my uh, panelists and thank you to all of the speakers uh, this morning. Uh, a final reminder to those watching the stream to consider joining one of the partnerships steering groups by emailing us on info at culturemile.london with steering group interest in the subject line. That would be really great. We're keen to really stuff those groups with excited people with strong views about what should happen in the area. My last act is to introduce on behalf of Brookfield Properties a beautiful five minute film that Culture Mile produced for them in the depths of 2020's lockdowns. This film is called Rising and was directed by Antonio Luxem. It was filmed at 100 Bishop's Gate and City Point against the best London sunset you can imagine. And it features the brilliant Maxine Kwok, first violinist at the London Symphony Orchestra, performing newly commissioned work from composer Darren Bloom. We hope you enjoy it and that we'll see you again soon. Many thanks. <laughs>